Seldom does one come across a person, especially from a distant land, who is devoted to your country and wants that his country should come closer to yours. Saichiro Musomi, who entered into his 100th year on 16th June 2015, can easily be called an architect of India-Japan relations, as he spent 70 years of his precious life in promoting the bilateral ties. As JIA office bearer, Mr. Misumi considered himself fortunate to have not only met Indian leaders like Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Indira Gandhi, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, K.R. Narayanan and I.K. Gujral, but also for having personally known Indian freedom struggle hero, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Acknowledging the human services of this great lover of India, the Indian government conferred the Padma Bhushan on Mr. Misumi on 30th March 2015 for promoting ties between Japan, the land of the rising sun, and India, the land of sunshine. Indeed, for Mr. Misumi, it was a special moment when he received the award from President Pranab Mukherjee. Though his health did not permit him to travel, he made special efforts at the age of 99 to come to India and receive the award from the President. The Indian government was pleased to give him all the special attention in taking care to ensure that he does not face any difficulty during his stay in Delhi. No matter if Mr. Misumi had to undergo dialysis as part of his health routine or any other special care, he was prepared to face all the hardships. For him, receiving the award from the Indian President was the ultimate, the event which he had never dreamt of himself. I had diastasis yesterday. I had no problem in India. He's 99 years old. So when I heard that he was coming to receive the award, uh, you know, it was just an unbelievable. Uh, but he made it. And I think he did it uh, you know, uh, in an excellent way. And uh, you know, uh, I really uh, felt uh, you know, uh, very, very grateful to your government that uh, you, know, you didn't forget about uh, Mr. Misumi. Way back in 1992, in recognition of his services in promoting India-Japan ties, Mr. Misumi was conferred the fifth order of the sacred treasure, Zuihu Order, gold and silver rays by the Emperor of Japan. Saichiro Misumi is one of those wonderful bridges between India and Japan who has sustained the relationship over his entire lifetime. He has been associated with promoting relations between India and Japan for 70 years of his life. I was really fortunate to meet uh, Mizumi-san, as we fondly call him, uh, at the embassy when they were celebrating his entry into his 99th year. It was a photography exhibition of his photographs which were taken by him for his wife who was bedridden and he would go out and take these photographs and take them back to her. It told me so much about the man. For Mr. Misumi, it must have been his 40th visit to India this time when he came to receive the award. During his entire career, he came to India several times, sometimes alone sometimes with his delegation for the promotion of economic and cultural relations. And now, at the twilight of his life, he came with his daughter to receive the Padma Award, which he richly deserved. In fact, his visit to the Rashtrapati Bhavan was also not the first one. Earlier, he had come in 1992 to meet the then president, Shankar Dayal Sharma, to commemorate the 40th anniversary of India-Japan Peace Treaty. He remembered giving sakura or cherry blossom seedlings to the president at that time. Mr. Misumi, in return, had received lotus seeds from the president from the botanical gardens of the Rashtrapati Bhavan. 
Mr. Misumi joined the Japan India Association as secretary in 1937, soon after his graduation from Oyama Gokin University. Since then, there has been no looking back. He remained associated with the JIA till 2007, when he stepped down as office bearer. Established in 1903, the Japan India Association is the oldest association of Japan with any country. Mr. Mizumi is 100 years of age and his 100 years of age except for the childhood has been consecrated to Japan in their relations. He is a sort of legend between Japan and India and he is still in good shape except for uh, some uh, uh, awkwardness of legs. His brain is uh, still working. So it is uh, our pleasure and uh, uh, how to say, a pride to have Mr. Mizumi as one of our uh, directors. Every day, Mr. Mizumi used to come to the JIA office and spend the entire day in culling out information about India. Getting information from his own country was not difficult. But to keep pace with the latest happenings in India on the political, economic and cultural aspects was indeed a tough call. Especially at that time when there were no mobile phones or the internet. Those days when there was nothing called an internet, getting information from India about what is happening in India is something which is very, very difficult. So he used to contact and say, yes, I want to put in my newsletter, Indo-Japan Association newsletter about India because it is IJA. It is but relevant to have only Indian and Japanese news. Japanese news you would collect it in being in Japan. But he has to source the Indian information. How would he get Indian information about culture, economic, whatever it is? So that is when we came across a great man like Mr. Misumi. Mr. Misumi ran the show all by himself at the JIA, bringing out the newsletters month after month that kept the people in both the countries familiar with the day-to-day -day happenings. I was with the Consul General of Japan in Chennai from 1970. I found him a very warm personality from first visit itself. Very friendly, very helpful, very affectionate, especially when I was little younger to him. And he uh, offered me all help in building a similar, similar association in Chennai. By the sweat of his brow, Mr. Misumi tirelessly worked to build the edifice of India-Japan relations. The Second World War broke out soon after Mr. Misumi joined the JIA. As the Great War drew to a close, the JIA was banned by the Occupation Army, as it had cooperated with the Indian Independence Movement. Not deterred by the adverse turn of events, Mr. Misumi turned the challenge into an opportunity. He started the India-Japan Economic Promotion Committee. As its executive director, he worked to promote ties with India which went on to achieve her independence in 1947. Following the signing of the peace treaty between India and Japan in 1952, the JIA regained its original name and Mr. Misumi became its managing director. After the Second World War, when Japan was devastated, Mr. Misumi was instrumental in arranging iron ore from India for reconstruction work in Japan. In the initial years of his association with JIA, Mr. Misumi was responsible for coordinating with Japanese companies and also for compilation and publication of business directory and the JIA newsletter. In addition to promoting person-to-person -person interactions, Mr. Misumi made painstaking efforts to publish a catalogue every year, introducing to India the various products of Japan. Spending a lifetime on cementing the India-Japan relations, Mr. Misumi was in for a pleasant surprise. 
when one day he found Prime Minister Narendra Modi, about whom he had heard so much, in front of him at an official function. The function was hosted in honor of Prime Minister Modi by the JIA and Japan-India Parliamentary Friendship League. Prime Minister Modi leaned on him and talked to Mr. Misumi and he too sat silently watching closely. Mr. Misumi recalls that the warmth of that meeting with Mr. Modi reminded him of the warmth with Subhash Chandra Bose, whom he had hugged so close that they could hear each other's heartbeat. I heard that he said that uh, he was reminded of Subhash Chandra Bose when he, when Prime Minister touched him, hugged him. Over there, he of course didn't utter any word. That was the feeling probably he had in his heart. And uh, later on, probably he converted that into words. India and Japan have in the past been bound by deep cultural ties which are about 20 centuries old. In recent times, these cultural relations have been interrupted because of the British domination of India. It is, however, certain that when India is free, these relations will be revived. Bose, according to Mr. Misumi, was the first to look east by turning to Japan, even before India attained independence. Subhash Chandra Bose worked very hard for India. Prime Minister Modi is also working very hard. Both have look east policy. It was Mr. Misumi who was instrumental in persuading the Japanese government to invite Bose to Japan. あの、非常に、え、インドで影響力のある大政治家だから、どうしても日本にもっと理解してもらわなきゃいけないんだ。から、地理的にもね、え、ベンガルの人は大体が、あの、インド人の中では日本に理解のある人多いんですよ。そうい
gave the fiery call on 4th July 1944. Give me blood and I promise you freedom. He is very, very good commander of Indian National Army. When the armies advance against the British soldiers, he always stands at the front line. He is a very brave soldier. Mr. Misumi, who was the chief researcher at the Secretariat, was sent to Burma several times to conduct research there as it was also under the British Empire. Mr. Misumi travelled on foot to Burma several times. On 18th August 1945, Bose died in a plane crash. His mortal remains were brought to Renkoji Temple in Tokyo and preserved there. Netaji's Lysen officer, Mr. Negeshi, a Japanese, always accompanied him. Before the war, uh, my father was working, worked in India for uh, Mitsubishi Corporation. Mr. Sender, who, 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 who recommended my father as a liaison officer of uh, Netaji. And uh, after that, so when Netaji came by, by submarine to Southern Ireland, that time my father waited for him. That, that was his first time uh, met Netaji. And after that, my father followed Netaji. My father followed him to Saigon. And that was the f last time my father met to, uh, Netaji. So after that, Netaji uh, fled to Taiwan and he met the, the accident. Although there are skeptics, this shrine has been visited by all leaders, like India's first Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, President Rajendra Prasad, and the then Prime Minister, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, in 2001. Like Subhash Chandra Bose, Justice Radha Binod Pal is also revered in Japan. At a critical moment of history, when after the Second World War, the International Military Tribunal for the Far East was set up. Justice Radha Binod Pal, who was nominated to serve on it, demonstrated solidarity with the Japanese people. Refusing to pronounce the Japanese guilty of war crimes, he handed in a dissenting opinion. At the Yasukuni Shrine, a memorial has been erected for Justice Radha Binod Pal. As in the case of Subhash Chandra Bose, Mr. Misumi helped to organize various events during the visit of the then External Affairs Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee in 1978 and as Prime Minister in 2001. Besides, Mr. Misumi also worked closely when the then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi held the Festival of India in Japan in 1988. In the first decade after diplomatic ties were established, relations between the two countries were upbeat. Several high-level exchanges took place, including Japanese Prime Minister Nobusuke Kishi's visit to India in 1957. Mr. Misumi gave him various ideas to make the visit a success. The visit of their highnesses, the then Japanese Crown Prince Akihito and Crown Princess Michiko in 1960 took the relations to a new level. President Rajendra Prasad Vice President Dr. S. Radhakrishnan and Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru personally received the high-ranking dignitaries on their arrival. After a gap of 50 years, they visited India again in 2013 and were equally at home, choosing to take a stroll in the Lodi Gardens in the capital. The turn of the 21st century witnessed a dramatic transformation in bilateral ties as it was during the path-breaking visit of Japanese Prime Minister Yoshiro Mori in 2000 that the Japan-India Global Partnership was launched. Since then, there has been no looking back. It's very 
付き合ったぐらいじゃなかなか全貌わからない国だけどねだからそれをもう少し深いところまでね理解し合ってするともっともっとね、うん、あのお互いにプラスがあるか,かでインドと日本はあの付き合うことによってねお互いにプラスが増す国でね、うん、マイナスは決してない。うん When Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Japan in September 2014, the relationship was upgraded to special strategic and global partnership, providing the much needed impetus for the trajectory of relations to soar to new heights. Abe and Modi decided to add one important word to our relationship. Up to that time, up to September last year, Our relationship was dubbed、uh, strategic and global partnership. He decided, Mr. Modi decided to add special, and he explained why special. Because our two countries are linked, are bonded with spiritual bondage. That is uh, uh, different from other two bilateral、uh, uh, relations. India and Japan share a special spiritual bond through Buddhism that dates back to 736 AD. The Indian Buddhist monk Bodhi Sena arrived in Japan to spread Buddhism. One of the famous Japanese travelers to India was Tenjiku Tokubei. Who was named after Tenjiku, the Japanese word for India, which means heavenly abode. Nalanda, the ancient seat of learning, had scholars and pupils from Japan. Bodh Gaya is a major pilgrim center for the Japanese. Interestingly, Hindu deities are worshipped in Japan, though under different names. Hindu deities like Saraswati. The goddess of learning is worshipped in Japan as Banzai Ten. Lakshmi is worshipped as Kichijo Ten. And Yama, the lord of death, is known as Enma. Kuber is worshipped as Bishamon Ten. These form part of the traditional Japanese Buddhist pantheon. Significantly, Mr. Misumi was greatly impressed by the Bhagavad Gita. Speaking about his attachment for the Bhagavad Gita, he remarked that he learnt a lot from the book and made use of the knowledge obtained from it in his life. Indo やるものはみんなね、ギターをまずよく学んで、その気持ちが分かってからあの日本とインドの関係をね、もう一遍考え直すんじゃないかという。As political relations between the two countries have been warm all along. Japanese companies like Sony, Toyota, and Honda have launched manufacturing facilities in India. The largest Delhi metro network was facilitated by Japanese assistance, which helped to conceptualize and execute the prestigious project. Mr. Misumi not only helped in introducing Japanese products to India, but also contributed. In bringing Japanese music and dance to India, he personally led cultural troops to India. Besides, he visited the Kalakshetra in Chennai. Considered to be a great center for the classical Indian dancers. It is due to Mr. Misumi's efforts that in Japan, people are not only familiar with Indian classical dancers, but are also learning it. Tamil superstar Rajni Kant weaved the magic in Japan following the release of Enthiran. Rajni Kant has become a household name, especially since his earlier super hit in Japan, Muttu. It is not only music and culture, but even the Indian cuisine is relished by the people of Japan. Rash Bihari Bose, the great Indian revolutionary associated with Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, who spent 30 years in Japan, 
started an Indian restaurant in Tokyo. It is very popular in Japan. The typical dish, Indo curry or chicken curry, served with rice and pickles, is relished by the people in Japan. Following the craze for it, the ready-to-eat packets of the Indian curry are sold at every store in Tokyo. Mr. Misumi, who entered the 100th year, says the secret of his health is yoga, which formed an integral part of his daily life. He learnt yoga from Jivanand Ghosh, a well-known yoga guru, and wants everyone to practice it in order to lead a healthy and an active life. I practice yoga every day since childhood. Mr. Mizumi is fond of photography and when it comes to cherry blossoms, he has captured the beauty of the flowers in all its hues and forms in his camera. He says he loves to present these flowers but only to those who can protect it. He is sure that Prime Minister Narendra Modi will treasure it. The cherry blossoms in Japan are symbolic of simplicity, spring and innocence. Japan has an annual flower viewing celebration called Hanami where thousands of people hold feasts under the blooming cherry blossom trees. The flowering trees symbolize the renewal of spring and the friendship between nations. Indeed, there is every reason for India and Japan to celebrate the special strategic and global partnership between the two great Asian nations. Thanks to Mr. Misumi for his painstaking efforts in making this possible by spending each day of his long career spanning nearly a century on strengthening ties between India and Japan. He is like a godsend to India. He likes India more than Indians. He loved India in the bones, I would say. Even though he has got on an age, he has a very, very clear memory of his association with Subhash Chandra Bose, um, with Justice Radha Binod Pal, and has a sweet sense of humor as he relates anecdotes. He would always put his chairman in front, but he was working all the time. He was excited, he was really happy. What uh, he had been you know, doing has been really, really awarded. Prime Minister himself met Misumi-san and after just a couple of months, he has also decided to award him. So it's a, it's a really great moment for us. He is a sort of legend between Japan and India. Subhash Babu India understands Japan better now. Japan understands India better now. But this is just the beginning.